um, so I'm going to talk about um, our current commission, which is with Marvin Gaye Chetwind. It's called Hermito's Children 2. Some of you might know her as Spartacus Chetwind. She changed her name last year, but just to avoid confusion, because that's what I've been dealing with a lot recently. Um, so I'm going to talk about how this particular project was curated, but also how we curate our program as a whole. Um, the majority of our exhibitions are new commissions, so what that means, kind of commissioning versus curating and how the process is different. Um, the way we work, it remains really close to the creative process, so we place a huge emphasis on risk-taking and putting the artist at the centre of everything we do. Um, in this presentation, I thought, therefore, I'd consider what kind of a curatorial, like what you have to think about when you're curating an exhibition or a programme. So, I guess, context, purpose of why you're doing it, the timelines, audience, artist development and interpretations. So, um, I thought I'd say a little bit first about what I do. Um, we, I work with artists rather than existing art objects to make a project happen. So, it's really important that we support them to enable their ambitions to be achieved. Um, this is one of our projects with Alex Birkin. Um, we don't currently use the title of curator at Studio Voltaire, but this is what I, I did study curating contemporary art for my masters. Um, and my program, my role as program coordinator, means that I work on the projects from concept to realization. I would be considered a curator in the sense that I'm constantly in really close dialogue with the artists and work as an artist liaison. So at the beginning of the project, that will be studio visits, talking to them about what they want to achieve from the commission. And then there'll be a constant communication throughout the project and you know, talk, seeing how the evolution of the project's going. Um, at the moment, when you're a curator, you spend a lot of time doing funding as well, so trying to make this work. Um, and obviously, we discuss at length how the project will be displayed, displayed in the space. And write text to make sure that the, the project is accessible and clear. I'm just kidding. I mean, no? Um, um, so, basically, I wanted to give you a little bit of context about what, what we do and what happens um, at Studio Voltaire. So, we're based in South London in Clapham. 2014 marks 20 years of Studio Voltaire as one of London's leading not-for-profit art organisations and we exist to support artistic practices and create a space for experimentation. We are an arts charity and we're supported by the Arts Council England. Um, we, a really important thing for, for what we do is support emerging and underrepresented artists and practices. So as a direct um, result of our activity, lots of artists have gone on to do, kind of have much bigger exhibitions and shows. This is Phila de Barlow's project with us in 2010, and very soon after that, she had a show, a two-woman show at the Serpentine, and then went on to um, be awarded the Devine Commission at Tate Britain. And she was much older when she had her show with us. She was in her 60s, and that's something we're kind of non-generational. Even though we work with emerging artists, it's not really, it's, it, we're not really interested in whether those emerging artists are 20 or 60, which is quite a unique thing in terms of organisations of our scale. Um, so I'm going to talk to you guys a bit about Marvin's work. Um, this is an image of a work that she made called An Evening with Jabba the Hutt in 2003. This is a still from one of her performances, Homemade Tasers. And then this is um, an image of the performance that took place at Studio Voltaire in September, Hamita's Children and this is a clip of it being filmed in our space. So this is the gallery space. Um, so Marvin's work is gen generally characterised by a kind of joyful, anarchic deconstruction of grand narratives. Um, she, she constructs collective performances, and it's deliberately amateurish and raw. Um, she also has this kind of quite Brechtian collapse between the audience and the actor, and so it's kind of completely non-hierarchical. Um, she, she skins many 21st century concerns with a humorous touch, whether it's political disenchantment, reactions against slick professionalism, or the breakdown between real, fictional, and virtual wor worlds. Um, at Studio Voltaire, we, we work with artists to develop long-term relationships, and quite often work with them on multiple occasions. This is um, an image from 2005, um, when 
Marvin was known as Lally, which was her original name before she was Spartacus. Um, and it was, it's called The Walk to Dover, and it was an off-site commission that emulated the narrative of Charles Dickens's novel, David Copperfield. Um, Marvin led a seven-day walk from London to Dover with a group of Victorian urchins. And um, as David Copperfield foraged for food, the group also did this. Um, Copperfield's journey tracked his shifting social status and explored class structures in Victorian England. And when Marvin was doing this, she wanted to draw comparisons between the debt prisons of Victorian London and contemporary credit card culture. This is quite an interesting project to talk about when we talk about deferred value. Studio Voltaire is still a really quite a small arts organisation. But when this was made in 2005, it was made on, the whole project was made with a budget of £3,000. And Joe, who is the director of Studio Voltaire, who's also actually one of the characters in this performance, um, was telling me that it was shown to about 10 people at a screening in the gallery. Um, in the last nine years, it's gone on to be shown at Whitechapel, Tate, White Columns in New York, and Arts Council England, and reached about half a million people in terms of audience. So almost 10 years later, we are showing Marvin's largest film commission to date. Um, it's an ongoing project that takes the form of an experimental television crime drama. Um, this is the second iteration of it, and the first is in the Tate collection now. Each episode follows a female detective called Joan Shipman, who is actually Jo Scotland in drag, um, and she uncovers and solves sex crimes. Um, the crime in this particular second episode is catting, which is the female equivalent of dogging and only takes place at sea. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, so it, the commission's been filmed over the last two years in various locations, um, including Gozo, Glasgow, Australia, and then finally London at Studio Voltaire. Um, the film combines live footage of live performances and then staged cinematic sequences. And we hosted the final performance at Studio Voltaire in September, um, which kind of is the climax of the whole film. And in that performance, which is called Listen Up, um, we had kind of 30 members of her troupe in the gallery space, which is set up. The installation is, remains now. So if you go and see the exhibition, that's what you see. And there was an aerialist rigged to the beams of our church space who was jumping over a nine-foot puppet of a bull and like a kodo drama with a six-foot drum. And it's a really bombastic, mad thing that she does and creates. Um, so the film and performance combine an eclectic range of sources from history, literature, and both high and low culture. Um, Hermitius Children 2 includes Catwoman, Minnow and Bull Leaping, Star Wars, and Mary Reno's The King Must Die. Um, the film's not chronological. There is an overarching narrative to do with the kind of mysterious disappearance of Hamito's children. But the, the story, the episode, includes sex, violence, blackmail, amongst other things. But it jumps around from time and place. As an artwork, it deals with lots of 21st century concerns. Um, it's a kind of... It's an, there's an idea of transformation and coming of age in it. Also of lower culture and how kind of television series and forms of culture like that can communicate ideas. And I think, personally, very interestingly, and something that comes across very strongly is gender politics. And this is something that goes on throughout all of Marvin's work. So I don't really want to over-explain what happens in the film too much, because having worked with her for quite a long time, it's not really how her work works. And it's quite mad, so it's quite hard to explain it. And when you do explain it, you lose something. So I've included a short kind of minute-long excerpt of the film, so you can see a bit what I've been trying to communicate. Um, the show's on at Studio Voltaire until December, so if you, if you want to see the rest of it, I'd urge you to go down and have a look. Let's see if this works with the sound. Mm -hmm. 